We all have a story to tell. Let's tell yours. Welcome to the Intellectual People Podcast with your host, Jason. Come together and listen to journey stories and more from interesting people. Welcome your host, Jason. Today on the Intellectual People Podcast, I have Pastor Cal, better known as Pastor Cal from Married at First Sight. How are you doing today, Pastor Cal? I'm awesome, man. I'm awesome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's good Thank to you be so on, your, on your show for intelligent people, intellectual That's people. That's right. Pastor Cal, can you tell the people that might not know who is Pastor Cal? Wow. Uh, that's a good question. I, I ask myself that sometimes. I, I am a, I'm an actual pastor, first of all. I don't just play one on TV. I do pastor church in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, but long before that, I was um, uh, counseling. Uh, I've been a, a relationship counselor, probably a pastoral counselor, probably for the last 20, eh, 20 plus years, actually. Um, and um, I am married to the lovely, effervescent Wendy Roberson. I have three children. Uh, we all live in Atlanta. Uh, we're we're kind of empty nesters, except for my, uh, my daughter, who uh, refuses to leave. She's in college. But uh, outside of that, we are, uh, we're, just a, we're just a normal family. My family reminds me that I'm normal. You know, they don't care about all this TV stuff. Right. So you are in a church weekly, correct? Correct. Yeah. And is that your true passion? Well, you know, that that is such a great question. I have been, I started pastoring back in 19, you know, <laughs> way, way, way back. Well, you know, actually in the, in the late 80s. So um, I started and then I, I took a break from pastoring and I became a stockbroker for like 12 years. And, and then I was a dean of arts at Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington, D.C., uh, which was a fascinating experience. Um, then I, I came back to pastoring. Um, all that, all the time, I, while I was, uh, you know, still counseling people upon request, and and now I'm 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 in this position. So I think I have a lot of passions, man. I, you know, pastoring does seem to be the the, the thread that has run through the fabric of my life. But uh, I don't plan to do it until I die. You no. don't. <laughs> no. What other interests do you have? I love what I'm doing now. I love the opportunity to talk to people on a grand scale, on a smaller scale, and uh, help couples. My wife and I, have, uh, since we've been married, uh, we've devoted a great portion of our lives to doing that, to uh, to focusing on um, on couples, healing couples. Uh, we both are second timers, and so uh, you know we understand the you know marital success and some marital challenges and failures. So we, um, we, we're we trying to impart that into other couples so that we can tide the stem of failed marriages that we see all around us. What do you believe the biggest factor of failed marriages is in your experience? Wow. Um, there are probably a couple, but I'd say the top would be um, l lack of willingness or ability to be completely vulnerable. Um, I think that a lot of people are afraid, scared to death of being known. And, and, and once you're known, and, and I think, and I, I remember my, my college professor told me this way, he said that, that um, a lot of people feel as though they're afraid to be known because if I tell you who I really am and you don't accept that, then that's all I have. I have nothing else left. And so it leaves you with a feeling of, of loss, a feeling of, of, of desperation. So I think that that's something that if, if people could learn to be vulnerable and to be open, I have never seen a couple argue where one person is completely open and completely vulnerable and completely honest with themselves and the other person is still driving the nail in, still kicking the horse while he's down. I've never seen that. I, normally if someone's vulnerable and they take, I'm not gonna say submissive, but they take more of a, more of a receptive response. A, a, a receptive a, a, a position, rather. Um, the other person tends to come around. So I think people are afraid to be vulnerable. We're afraid to be known. So we put up a shield and we fight back and and then it just builds constant walls and over and over and before you know it, it's just a mess. What tools do you believe that 
pe- will help people to be more vulnerable are out there. Yeah, um, I, I think that in order for real vulnerability to take place, uh, people have to you have to revisit or, or visit the things that that made you um, afraid of, of of showing who you really are. Um, a lot of people um, have histories of, of injury or abuse or or what have you. And those are things sometimes a lot of times with a counselor that have to really be uh, approached. Um, I use a, a tool called um, uh, Naked Moments. I mean, it, it is, it's an old concept, but this is uh, uh, our version of it, where um, you your partner gives you a safe space to um, to become vulnerable, where you actually have an opportunity to speak, and that person in turn does not respond. You're telling them everything on your heart. And you normally use the phrase naked moment, honey, I need a naked moment, or, or you know, sweetheart, I need a naked moment or whatever. And that light comes on. And what that means is that at that point, the TV goes off, the phone goes down, the um, you know, all outside extractions are lost and I'm just focused on you and I'm listening, not for rebuttal. I'm not listening for rebuttal. I'm not listening to see what you say wrong. I'm not listening for a comeback. I'm only listening to gain, emo- gain information because this is a pivotal moment for me to learn who you are. And we take couples through that quite often about how to have naked moments. And once you learn and feel, and I guarantee you that once your partner talks to you and you just listen and just say, okay, fine, I understand, tell me more. Okay, fine, I understand, tell me more. And once you, you, you're just listening, after a while your partner will start to calm down and say, okay, well, how do you feel? And then is your then's your turn not to shoot back, but your turn to it's your turn to say, you know what, I hear you, and I want us to be better. So I'm going to work on that, and that takes a, that takes a lot. It takes a lot. Yeah, well, vulnerability and communication very oh important, right? Oh my God, yes, absolutely. How did married at first sight come about? Wow, uh, for me or just in general? <laughs> well. Let's let's do both. Let's say okay. talk about how it came about in general, and then for yourself. Uh, Married at First Sight is a takeoff from a, a a Danish show that's been around for for a while, actually, uh, called Married at First Sight. Of course, not in English, but it was called Married at First Sight. And so, kinetic content under the um, uh, leadership of their founder uh, Keith Colin, uh, pres- you know, developed the show from that Danish broadcast. And he, of course, the first few episodes you'll see are very, uh, are a lot different than the way we do it now, because it was almost required that they follow that particular format. But it's it's changed and it evolved into what it is now. Um, I came in on the fourth season of Married at First Sight. Uh, my wife and I actually were contacted by a casting agency who were looking for a couple for one of their other shows, Seven Year Switch. And so... Wendy and I, we decided to, you know, we 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 look at it, and so they contacted us, and we suggested a couple that was having some particular troubles that we felt that this might be a a possible solution to. And the couple kept talking about us. They constantly talked about what we were telling. You know, Pastor Cal told us this, and and Wendy told us this, and, and so they kept, they talked about us so much to the production that they wanted to meet us and they wanted to film us doing an actual counseling session with them, and then that. During that time, you know, they were contacting people and texting people saying, oh, wow, you know, you got to you got to hear these people. And so uh, that led to a, uh, to uh, another meeting with uh, the production company and and some other short uh, stints we did with Little Women of Atlanta and some other uh, other little projects. And and eventually we were, I was asked to uh, be a member of the, uh, of the of the of the experts for Married at First Sight in season four. And the rest, I guess, is history. How authentic is it? Ah, yes. Let's get into that. How authentic is Married at First Sight? Now, this is going to surprise you. Look, it, it's it's about as real as you could possibly imagine. I think a lot of people feel as though Married at First Sight is sort of like a, um, it's almost almost like scripted, but it, it's it's really not. Um, we, we choose uh, now five couples out of thousands of applicants. And by the time we get to these people, these are actual people who actually want to be married. And we actually are vetting them with psychological background checks, psychological evaluations, uh, criminal background checks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They can lie to us, as we've seen many have. 
But generally, man, we go through it. We really, really vet them. And then Dr. Pepper, Dr. Viviana and myself, we sit down and we interview them exhaustively until we've chosen these five couples. Uh, then there's still, even with all that being said, there's no accounting of what's gonna happen once the camera comes on and these people are actually under the pressure of the experiment. There's no real telling what's gonna happen. But um, it's very authentic. There are no, there are no, uh, we don't plant information. We don't, um, we don't script how it's going to turn out. I know some sort of partially scripted shows will say, well, this season, this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen. None of that. We simply turn the camera on and let them be married, period. So what you see is actually what's happening without any prompting from us or for the producers. People think that the producers are doing this, the producers are doing that. Look, the fact of the matter is we're the ones, Dr. Pepper, Dr. V and I are the ones who actually choose the couples. Right. So the, 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 uh, um, the, pro the uh, producers and the um, associate producers and every, all these other people, they're our ear eyes and ears. They tell us what's happening. If there's a problem, they call us. If there's a problem, okay, look, this is happening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these are real issues and real people and real situations. And it just amazes me uh, just how diverse their, their problems are, you know, but this it's, is real, man. It, I tell I, people like this. I tell people like, this, if I would have put, I don't know, are you married? I'm not. I You're was. Not. I was. Uh, you were. You were. Okay, fine. Yeah. Good enough. Let's say if I put a camera when you were married in your house for 40 hours a week, you get the point, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it would have picked out some stuff that would have been TV worthy. Correct. And I think that goes for anybody for sure. Oh my God, it goes for me, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. What's the metrics that, what is the metric that you use to match the couples? Oh, good. Yeah. What we use a number of different metrics. First of all, um, we weed people out uh, if they're too young. And we, eh, 25 is personally about my cutoff cut age. I think at that age, eh, yeah, you know, both. yeah, 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 yeah. You need some life. And normally uh, we keep it between 25 and early 40s. Um, somebody, uh, people have always asking us, so what about older people? I'm working on it. We're hoping we can do something about it. I would love to see that. Uh, today it is not happen. Uh, un uh, unfortunately, that's, that's above my pay grade right now. <laughs> but um, but um, once we do that, um, uh, then we, um, we look at, we, we do a, 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 a write-up of all, we ask them for all of their, uh, their deal breakers. We ask them for their particulars. They have to do a roughly about a 500 or so question questionnaire. Wow. They do a 75 question questionnaire even to sign up. After that, you do about a 500 question questionnaire. So totally probably about eh, close to 600 questions. Sure. We take, we extrapolate all that information and we create charts. And this is after we've, after we're down to probably like the final 25 people uh, that we vetted out just just from interviews. And then for, of those final 25 or so people, um, we do charts and we look at their compatibilities, uh, their similarities, and also their compatible differences. And then we try to figure out what are the X factors, those things that you can't see, you know, maybe likes and dislikes. So how is this person going to handle pressure, et cetera, et cetera? Well, obviously, we're not perfect at it, but I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, and then we do all that and then we, we, we match. We put a, a, a gentleman on the board because normally we have more women than men. And then we have all the possible matches, then, et cetera, et cetera. Then we go through it. We go through it. We vet. We vet. We go through it over ad nauseum till we come up with five couples that we all can agree with. The three of us. And then we also ask uh, for buy in. Uh, how, how, do, how does everyone else feel about this? You know, because they've been watching the whole process also. How many applicants total do you get for a season? For a season, thousands per season. I think totally, we were over seventy-five thousand total that have uh, wow um, that have applied since the beginning of the show. I think it, it depends. For instance, in a city like uh, like we're casting for Boston now, in a city like Boston, a great city, but the population is not hardly as 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 big as Atlanta or uh, or Houston, where we where we where we're currently filming. We're currently uh, showing now. Uh, so we may get a, a few thousand, you know, per per uh, um, per city, uh, okay. which, which is a lot. 
but That's then you, yeah, it, it's a lot of people to, so we have an incredible casting department that spends, in fact, an Emmy award women winning casting department that has, um, that weeds through a lot of that before it gets down to us. Interesting. Do you provide counseling to the couples once they are a couple or individually leading up to the show of taping? We give, we meet with them. We do interviews. Um, if there are any challenges that present themselves, we will address them. We will talk to them. We've done that on occasion. Normally the, the bulk of our counseling happens after they're married, but we have on occasion, in fact, the last season, we did meet with everyone uh, prior to the actual, uh, before they even met their spouses. Uh, so there, it, it varies. If we do see some, some challenges arising, we will talk to people uh, to find out what they are. I mean, we've had to, to, to change courses, you know, late in the game because of some of those, that, you know, in, in some of the seasons of, in, in the past. But generally, our counseling starts, you know, once they're married and going forward. And even after decision day, we're still available to talk to the couples. I mean, I still talk to couples now from seasons back. Do you really? I really do. Yeah. They'll text me, help me know, what do you think about this? Uh, how can we get through this? And so I'll put them both on a Zoom call. This is outside of filming, outside of the cameras. This is just me and them or Dr. Pepper and them, you know, we because we're we're actually very invested in their success. We really are. Do you do this for any personal satisfaction, putting the business side away, right? But just to bring two strangers together in hope of giving them what most people want in life? Yeah, man, there, there, there is a definite personal satisfaction in it. I mean, I mean, look, we, we have um, roughly about eight babies, you know, from Married at First Sight. We have, oh God, how many couples do we have? I don't know, a whole bunch of couples, like 12, I think. Is it that many? Okay. I think it may be about that. Um, yeah, I think it might be 12 couples that are that are still still married. Um, and it's it, it's it's incredibly rewarding to see these people who have formed families and are are doing well. And even the ones, some of the ones who didn't get married, I mean, their lives are changed forever because they've learned so much about themselves. And and some of the ones who you think have had, you know, like bitter experiences that and they should be angry or what have you. They come back and say, you know what? Thank you for this. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about Mindy Scheiben, you know, who I love. I think she's so awesome. Yes. Uh, Mindy, I, I love Mindy. And she, she, she'll, I mean, she's so grateful for the experience. You know, I think about Mika and out of uh, Philadelphia yep. or, or DC. Uh, she is so thankful. I mean, a lot, so many people are so thankful for the experience, even though they did not find their, their love match because it helped them to grow up, you know, and to learn about how to be how to be better for the next part, next person that comes along. So where does the show go from here, do you believe? To infinity and beyond. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we want, you know, the, the, the beauty of this show is that there is there is no lack of people who want to be married. And believe it or not, the, the majority of marriages in the world are arranged marriages. And this, of course, is a different take on the traditional arranged marriage. Absolutely. But I, what we hear is, is that a lot of people are saying, you know what? I'm sick of dating. I'm sick of swiping left and swiping right. I, I don't want to go on Farmers Only anymore, you know, or whatever, you know. Yeah. So so they'll say, hey, look, get rid of all the dating. Get rid, Just hear what I want to say and find me somebody. I mean, come on, that that's everybody. Yep. Dating sucks. It sucks. I mean, you're a single guy. I mean, come on. Dating yep. sucks, man. And so the beauty we have here is that there are so many people who want to just get into the marriage situation, find me somebody that who's going to be compatible to me and let me be happy and just ride off into the sunset. So as long as that exists, I think that we have a, a show that's going to that's, that's going to, you know, add some value, you know, to uh to uh, to our viewers uh options so I'm looking forward to, to to more in the future excellent are the participants paid at all uh well you know what uh they are they are incented w with with uh money to cover expenses okay 
uh, because sometimes they may they're inconvenienced. Sometimes they are. Uh, yeah, they may they may have to skip a job, work or something. But are they paid as celebrities would be paid? Absolutely not. And that's my design. Um, yeah. I saw on the Internet someone said that they were getting like a million dollars an episode or a million dollars. Well, hey, they're, they're getting more than me. I mean, <laughs> I was just going to say Pastor Cal would what? wouldn't mind that. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll be married at first sight. No, but uh, but they are. Uh, they are uh they're give they're they're incentivized but you know and, and you know which is reasonable but no sure. no you're not you don't do this for the money and that's by design you know chris colin who created the show said he did not he does not want people to look at money as a factor in getting married and I, I still respect that absolutely pastor cal do you have a book i have a book that i'm so excited about man it's 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 coming out um in September, this is the this is the uh, preliminaries of marketing copy. But uh, this is the book that's coming out in September. It's called "Marriage Ain't for Punks," nice. and it's a no nonsense guide uh, to building a long, re a guiding relationship. I, I, honestly, I, I've taken the last twenty or so years of of experiences that I've had dating back to the late eighties, early nineties, and um, counseling experiences. I've poured all of that into this one book. It's been a serious labor of love and it's a very straightforward uh, manual for marriage. And I think that a lot of people, because I get so many, I get volumes of requests for counseling and it, and it just breaks my heart because I cannot counsel all these people. So I, I did this as a result to sort of be an extension of me. And uh, and I think that it, it's, it's, it's an awesome opportunity for anyone uh, who's married or who's thinking about marriage or who even divorced because there's a section in it that talks about how to actually end when it's over and why it should be over. And so uh, in that respect, I think it's even good for people who are who are who are deciding that marriage is not for them anymore. And how do I live my life after? How do I categorize the relationships in my life? Marriage Ain't for Punks is 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 dedicated to a lot of that. So I'm excited. September 7th is the uh, is the date that it comes out. And, and where will it be available? Wherever books are stole, are sold, not stolen. Wherever books are sold. <laughs> Maybe wherever books are stole also. Just don't steal this one. But uh, where, <laughs> so it's <laughs> wherever books are sold on, on all of the, um, the um, all of the online stores, uh, the bigger ones, the smaller ones. Uh, we plan on having some hard copies in your, in your, uh, Superstores and Walmarts and Targets and you name it. It's going to be all over the place. Fantastic. Pastor Cal, I do have to ask, is Please. there anything that I have not asked you that you would like to share or tell us about? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I want to tell you about my wife, who is freaking brilliant. Um, okay. And I, I think and I, and I say this, I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever done this, um, you know, because you know, people ask me that all the time and I, and I don't say anything. But uh you know, a lot of I, I told my my publisher that your know, her name needs to be on this also because, you know, she's so insightful. Wendy is so insightful, and, and she adds so much to everything that I do. So I'm giving her a shout out and uh, letting everybody know that you know Pastor Cal wouldn't be Pastor Cal without Wendy. So uh, you know, yeah, that's one thing I want to tell everybody about my wife. She's 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 a boss. And if anybody wants to learn more about Pastor Cal, they can go to CalvinRoberson.com. We'll also, up. Instagram on I am Calvin Roberson on Instagram. Any other social media you'd like to plug? Yeah, yeah uh, Twitter. Or, I don't know. Twitter, I think, or Facebook. Look, I, look I'm old school. Okay. I, I still remember MySpace. So, uh, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just got rid of my AOL account. Yeah, I get no, it. But, uh, no. But uh, CalvinRobinson.com and Instagram is basically where you'll, see, you'll find most of find most of my presence. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody goes and checks out Pastor Cal and check him out on on uh, Married at First Sight. When does the new season start? Oh wow! Well, a new season is still about still being uh, uh, um, is yet to be announced. I know it's going to be in Boston. We can expect it sometime in the summer. Uh, the new season, no, this we're filming in Boston now. The season in Houston should be debuting sometime in the uh, in the summer, normally around around July ish. 
So uh, they're looking forward to that. That should be pretty awesome. But uh, we're still in season 12 right now. And I think as of as of this podcast, uh, tonight is decision night on Wednesday. So the show comes on every Wednesday. It's decision day. Do you want to stay married or get a divorce? Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for listening. Find us on YouTube and Facebook at the Intellectual People Podcast and online at the intellectualpeoplepodcast.com. Check back for exciting new episodes.